This screencast is on economic growth. In this screencast, we're going to understand what determinants cause economic growth. We're also going to demonstrate economic growth on various macroeconomic graphs. The economy fluctuates between periods of expansion and contraction in the short run, but economic growth can occur in the long run. The first macroeconomic model that we're looking at here is the aggregate production function. Output per employed worker is a measure of average labor productivity. When we talk about productivity, we're looking at the different contributions from technology per worker, from physical capital per worker, and also from human capital per worker. Economic growth is measured by the growth rate of GDP per capita over time. In order to be able to calculate GDP per capita, you look at GDP divided by the population. When we look at the different determinants that affect the productivity between technology physical capital, and human capital, the number one that gets tested on is capital stock. In the short run, when there's a decrease in the real interest rate, there's an increase in capital. Over time, that increase in capital causes capital formation or capital stock in the long run. And this will lead to economic growth. Another major contributor to economic growth is education. When our human capital increases their skills and ability, their productivity goes up, and this in turn will cause economic growth. There's also such determinants as research and development, and also an increase in immigration from abroad. When we look at the different models, the ADAS model is the one that we go to the most, and that is because our potential output here represents the GDP per capita that we are measuring and looking at to see if it is growing. In order to show economic growth, you have an increase in the LRAS or a shift to the right. And this will cause a new potential output that is larger than the original potential output. But please note, the actual output has not changed. Actual output is the intersection of the SRAS and the AD, and so you have the same price level and, and um, output when you are looking at the shift of the LRAS. And in fact, what you have that gets created here is a recessionary gap because my actual is less than my potential. Let's look at the scenario where you have a decrease in the real interest rate. Again, in the short run, a decrease in the real interest rate will increase C and IG, which will cause an increase in AD, which will cause an increase in price level and real GDP. Over time, the accumulation of that capital will cause an increase in capital stock. In the long run, when you have an increase in capital stock, that will cause an increase in the LRAS. When you have an increase in education, this will cause an increase in the LRAS. When we are increasing the LRAS, we are showing economic growth. Another model that can be used is the PPC, the Production's Possibility Curve or the Production's Possibility Frontier. This is the maximum amount that you can produce with the given resources that you have. In this case here, we have capital goods and we have consumer goods. Now, if we go back to that scenario where the economy is focusing on the production of capital goods because you have a decrease in the real interest rate, then what you will find at point A that is demonstrated on the PPC graph, in the long run, this will cause an outward shift of the PPC. An increase or a rightward shift of the LRAS is demonstrated by an outward shift of the production's possibility curve. Capital is used to produce both capital and consumer goods, and therefore you will have more of both. Another model that gets talked about a lot is the Phillips curve. 
With the Phillips curve, we're looking at the trade-off between unemployment and inflation. Recognize that in the Phillips curve, it is measured as a percentage here. When you have an increase in the LRAS, that causes a decrease in the long run Phillips curve because your real GDP is going up, so your unemployment is going down. This less leftward shift of the Phillips curve reflects the rightward shift of the LRAS. Notice that there is no movement along the Phillips curve because again, our actual output and our price level do not change when you have a shift of the LRAS.